already showing you how to get in shape in 2017 with our cool fit videos. But in this video, I'm going to show you four ways to tune up your Mac. So let's get started. I've mentioned this before on the channel, but one of the main issues of Macs running slow is that the hard drive is nearly full. When free space on the hard drive gets too low, the OS can't operate efficiently, and spends more time doing smaller read-write operations, which is why you'll start to see the wheel of death more often. You can find out how much space is left by going to the Apple logo in the top left, and clicking on About This Mac. Then choose the Storage tab to see how much available free space your Mac still has. If the remaining space is less than 2GB, then your computer is struggling. A good rule of thumb is to keep at least 3 times the amount of installed RAM free. For example, if you have 2GB of RAM installed, keep at least 6GB free on the disk. To free up space, you can use macOS's storage utility tool to optimise storage, empty trash automatically and reduce clutter. Or if you're on a Mac that doesn't support macOS Sierra, you can use an app such as OmniDisk Sweeper, which does pretty much the same. I've done full tutorials on each, which I'll make sure to leave links to in the description down below. The disk directory is the list of files stored on your hard drive along with their locations. Sometimes this can get out of sync with the actual files on disk. If a program crashes or doesn't complete saving a file correctly, the information in the directory might not match what's actually on your disk. If a program crashes, it could corrupt cache files, then this could make them partially or completely unreadable. There are lots of utilities to help with these problems, one simple solution is built into your Mac. The safe boot will run a full scan on your drive sector and also fix any problems found in the disk directory clearing cache files of old data ready for a clean start on your next reboot. If you want to perform a safe boot, simply restart your computer and hold down the shift key until you reach the desktop. Wait a few minutes, and a progress bar may appear on screen depending on your version of OS X or Mac OS. Once you reach the desktop, release the shift key and restart. For more advanced disk directory repairs, I highly recommend Disk Warrior. If your Mac won't boot at all, you can often get things working again with this useful utility. When your Mac starts up, programs you use frequently can be set to automatically launch at startup. Safari, Mail, Dropbox, etc. Several background processors may also get loaded to support programs you've installed, like backup software. And some programs may have configured themselves to launch at startup whether you want them to or not. Skype anyone? To prune these down, check in a few places. First, visit System Preferences and then Users and Accounts. And then click the Login tab. Here, you'll see a list of items set to open automatically when you log in. Some of these items may no longer be needed. You can also remove any programs that may have configured themselves to run automatically which you don't use. To remove an item, select it and click the minus sign. A long delay at startup could be a sign of a missing shared network drive. If you've previously connected your Mac to a server or another networked Mac, say at work, that drive may have been added to the list of items to open up at login. If you're then on another network or the share is unavailable for some reason, the Mac will pause as it waits for a response from the missing disk. Check to see if there are shared drives or volumes in the login items list, and if so, remove them. The next few steps are a bit more advanced. You need to be familiar with locating and deleting configuration files on your hard drive. If you are not comfortable with these steps, skip these and head straight to the next section. On the hard drive, there are a few more folders you can check as listed on the screen. These folders contain .plist files that launch background processes, backups, VPNs, etc. You can delete items you recognize as outdated or programs no longer needed. Also, note that in OS 10 10.7 and above, the user library folder is invisible by default. To make it visible, hold down the option key, then in Finder, click on Go and then Library. The more RAM you have, the more programs you can run simultaneously with less need to cache and store data on the much slower disk storage. Doubling or quadrupling the amount of installed RAM, if possible, will make a noticeable difference in how smoothly the computer functions. You can see how much memory is installed on your Mac under the Apple menu by choosing About This Mac. For how to install more RAM on your MacBook or iMac, check out the links in our slightly older but still relevant videos. Quitting unused applications can also improve performance. I've come across many people complaining about bizarre behaviour on their Macs, only to find 30 apps running simultaneously. Quitting or force quitting most of them can substantially improve performance. If you need to force quit, restart the computer afterwards. Speaking of restarting, why do techs always tell you to do this? Well, for one thing, it tends to solve problems more than half the time. So, it's our default response for a quick fix. But, more seriously, after your computer's been running for a while and swapping lots of things in and out of RAM, or after a program has crashed, small errors can snowball into bigger glitches. Rebooting the computer clears out everything from RAM, stops all running processes, reloads the OS, and brings things back to square one. Sometimes, problems seem so vast that a fresh installation of the operating system is a tempting fix. 
In my experience, this isn't routinely needed. It's definitely worth trying the steps I've mentioned previously before replacing the OS. However, if you've tried all the steps I've mentioned and are still having problems, an OS reinstall might help. Remember to back up all of your data first using either Time Machine or making a clone of the hard drive. I'll make sure to leave the link in the description down below for how to do this. Well, that's it for this video. If you found it useful, go ahead and hit that like button. It really does help us out. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss a single video from Cult of Mac. I'll catch you in the next one.